When Musk first announced his intentions for the Starship, there were doubts about the project's practicality. Yet, the Starship has already completed two launches, demonstrating SpaceX's capability to turn ambitious ideas into reality. In his latest update, Musk has revealed a bold new plan for the Starship Super Heavy Booster. Before we delve deeper into the specifics, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on the Starship and other innovative achievements by SpaceX in the field of space travel. Traditionally, rockets were one-time use vehicles. After a single launch, these massive structures, often costing hundreds of millions of dollars, would be discarded, either burning up in the Earth's atmosphere or crashing into the ocean. This approach made space travel extraordinarily expensive and limited. Then Musk came and revolutionized the space industry with the idea of reusable rockets. SpaceX's Falcon 1, Falcon 9, and Falcon Heavy rockets have already demonstrated partial reusability, with their first stages returning to Earth and landing vertically after launch. However, the Starship represents a leap beyond this partial reusability. Unlike the Falcon series, Starship is designed to be fully reusable. This means that not just the first stage, but every part of the rocket is intended to be launched, landed, and flown again. This includes both the Starship spacecraft itself, which is the upper stage designed for crew and cargo transport, and the Super Heavy Booster, which is the first stage responsible for the initial thrust out of Earth's atmosphere. While the Falcon rockets have successfully reused their first stages, the upper stages have always been expendable, discarded after each mission. Starship's design, in contrast, aims to reuse both stages. Building on the success of SpaceX's previous rockets, Musk has unveiled a new plan for the Starship Super Heavy Booster that aims to redefine the standards of rocket reusability. This plan centers around the booster's ability to not only return to Earth, but also to be ready for a subsequent launch within an incredibly short time frame. The target is for the Super Heavy booster to land back on Earth in about six minutes, and then be prepared for another launch within just an hour. Achieving a turnaround time of just an hour for relaunch is an extraordinary goal, challenging both in terms of engineering and logistics. The booster would need to withstand the immense stress of multiple launches and re-entries, necessitating advanced materials and design. Additionally, the process of landing, conducting necessary checks, refurbishing refueling and preparing the booster for relaunch would need to be executed with precision. The idea of catching a falling rocket with a launch tower is a practical approach to rocket reusability. Mechazilla's role in the assembly process is highlighted by its involvement in the stacking of Ship 25 and Booster 9, operations that have been repeated six times. Each instance has shown improvements in the process, indicating a progression in both the speed and precision of Mechazilla's operations. The launch and landing tower, standing at 145 meters, is a robust steel structure equipped with mechanical arms. One arm serves as a rapid disconnect and propellant umbilical connection, while the other two, known as the colossal chopsticks, work in tandem to catch incoming spaceships. These chopsticks, 36 meters in length, operate on a rail track with a powerful winch system, similar to an oil rig's drilling mechanism. The coordination between the booster and chopsticks is critical, especially during the final landing burn. The reduction in operational times for the Starship and its Super Heavy booster, each towering at 120 meters, is a considerable feat given their size and intricacy. In 2024, SpaceX is aggressively pursuing its goals for more flight operations. In 2024, SpaceX is aggressively pursuing its goals for more flight operations. The company is planning to increase its launch frequency significantly, targeting about 12 flights per month. This would amount to 144 flights over the year. The increase in launches will include a variety of missions, with a large number dedicated to expanding the Starlink satellite internet network. The Starlink project is essential for SpaceX, as it aims to provide high-speed internet globally. This expansion is a crucial part of the company's strategy in the satellite internet market. SpaceX's 2024 schedule also includes important works with NASA, particularly on the Starship rocket, which is a big part of the Artemis program. 
For this program, NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.8 billion contract to develop a lunar variant of the Starship to land astronauts on the Moon. This is part of NASA's broader goal to establish a sustainable human presence on the Moon by the end of the decade, as a stepping stone for future Mars missions. However, the development of the Starship has not been without its challenges. There have been concerns about the constant delays in its testing and development. Initially, ambitious timelines were set for orbital test flights and lunar missions, but these have been pushed back several times. These delays can be attributed to various factors, including technical challenges, regulatory hurdles, and the inherent complexities of developing such an advanced and untested spacecraft. These delays are of particular concern for NASA's Artemis program. The program has set ambitious goals, including landing the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024, a timeline that is increasingly looking difficult to meet. The success of the Artemis program heavily relies on the timely development of the Starship, as it is slated to be the lunar lander that will transport astronauts from orbit to the moon's surface. To make these ambitious plans a reality, the Starship is gearing up for several crucial test flights. One such upcoming test flight, which is particularly important, is planned to be an orbital test from Starbase. The plan is for the Super Heavy booster to shut down approximately 169 seconds after liftoff and separate from the Starship upper stage two seconds later. The booster is expected to fly back to a location 32 kilometers offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, landing about 495 seconds after liftoff. The details about whether it will land on a platform or splash down in the ocean have not been specified. Meanwhile, the Starship will ignite its engines shortly after stage separation and is expected to shut down its engines around 521 seconds after liftoff, having achieved orbit. However, it will complete less than one full orbit before re-entering and landing in the Pacific Ocean, approximately 100 kilometers northwest of Kauai, Hawaii. This landing is planned to be a soft ocean landing. A major focus of these tests is to develop and demonstrate in-space refueling technology, which involves transferring cryogenic propellants between spacecraft in space. As the dawn of 2024 unfolds, SpaceX is making strides toward the third flight. Booster 10 has now returned to the SpaceX shipyard for final modifications and checkouts, gearing up for its upcoming flight. The highlight of these tests was a successful 33-engine static fire conducted on December 29, 2023. Notably, this static fire was carried out without a spin prime. This suggests SpaceX's increased confidence in the engines and installation process, potentially attributable to improved engine install stands. Moreover, the propellant loading time for Booster 10 has been significantly reduced, demonstrating the efficiency of the newly deployed pumps and subcoolers. This development points towards a more streamlined process, aligning with the company's goals of rapid and reusable space launches. Ship 28, the other key component of the Starship vehicle, has also seen a flurry of activity. Following a full six-engine static fire on December 20, 2023, and a subsequent single-engine static fire nine days later, it too is prepared for the upcoming mission. The static fire on December 29 also marked the second occasion where both the booster and ship static fired on the same day, underlining a synchronicity in their development and testing processes. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.